In this video, we're going to talk about how to identify critical points, saddle points, and any local extreme values in a multivariable function such as f of x, y. So let's go over the steps that we need to take. The first thing is we want to identify any points of interest. This could be a critical point or a saddle point. And that point of interest can be found when the first partial derivative with respect to x is equal to 0, and the partial derivative with respect to y is equal to 0. Now, the second thing we want to do once we identified this point is we need to calculate d. And we need to do that by finding the second partial derivative. So d is going to be f of double x times f double y where this is the second partial derivative with respect to x, and this is the second partial derivative with respect to y, and then minus the mixed partial derivative squared. Now, once we have the value for d, we can now analyze the point that we have. So if d is positive, and if f double x is positive, then that means that the function evaluated at AB is a local minimum. So that's case one. Case two is if D is positive and if the second derivative or the second partial derivative with respect to X, if that's a negative, in this case, F of AB would represent a local maximum. Now, in the third case, where d is negative, it really doesn't matter where or what the value of f double x is. If d is negative, then the function f of a, b, it's neither a local min nor is it a local max. But the point a, b, that point will be a saddle point. So those are the steps that we're going to take for this type of problem. Feel free to pause the video and write this down as we're going to be referring to it throughout the rest of this video. So let's go ahead and begin. Number one, given that f of x comma y is equal to 10 minus 3x squared minus 2y squared plus 8y plus 12x, identify any critical points, saddle points, and any local extrema. So the first thing we're going to do is find the partial derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of 10 is 0. That's a constant. The derivative of negative 3x squared, that's going to be negative 6x. y is going to be treated as a constant. So the derivative of 2y squared and 8y, that's going to be 0. And the derivative of 12x is going to be positive 12. Now we're going to set f of x equal to 0, and we're going to factor out a negative 6. So we can see that when x is 2, the partial derivative with respect to x will be 0. So now let's find the partial derivative with respect to y. So 10, negative 3x squared, and 12x will become 0. The derivative of negative 2y squared, that's going to be negative 4y. And the derivative of 8y is going to be positive 8. So we're going to set f sub y equal to 0. Factor it out on negative 4, this will give us y minus 2. And so when y is equal to 2, f sub y will be 0. So our point of interest is 2 comma 2. Now, the next thing we need to do is calculate the second partial derivatives. So we're going to calculate f sub double x, which is the derivative with respect to x of negative 6x plus 12. So that's going to be just negative 6. And then f double y, that's going to be the derivative of negative 4y plus 8 with respect to y, which is just negative 4. Now, we need to calculate the mixed derivative or rather the mixed partial derivative, f sub xy. So the derivative of negative 6x plus 12 
with respect to y, that's going to be 0 because 6x will be treated as if it's a constant. And so now we can calculate d, which is f sub double x times f sub double y minus f sub xy squared. So that's going to be negative 6 times negative 4 minus 0 squared, so that's positive 24. So d is greater than 0, which means that this point is not a saddle point. It could be a local max or a local min. Now, looking the fact, or looking at the fact that f sub double x is negative 6, that means that it's less than 0. So reviewing the rules that we went over or that we wrote down early in this video, when d is positive and the second partial derivative with respect to x is negative, that means that this point is a local min. So the last thing we need to do is evaluate that point at the function. So we're going to plug in 2. We're going to replace x with 2 and y with 2. So this is 10. 2 squared is 4 times 3. That's 12. 2 squared times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 12 times 2 is 24. 10 minus 12 is negative 2. Negative 8 plus 16 is positive 8. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. 6 plus 24 is 30. So the point 2 comma 2 is a local min with a value of 30. Now let's work on another example problem. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. So the first thing we're going to do is find the partial derivative with respect to x. The derivative of 2x to the fourth, it's going to be 2 times 4x cubed, which is 8x cubed. The derivative of 2y to the fourth with respect to x, that's 0. And the derivative of negative 8xy, the derivative of x is 1. So it will be negative 8y times 1, or just negative 8y. And 12 is a constant, so that's going to go to 0. Now let's find a partial derivative with respect to y. The derivative of 2x to the 4th and 12 will go to 0. The derivative of 2y to the 4th, that's going to be 8y to the 3rd. And the derivative of negative 8xy, y turns to 1, so it's just negative 8x. Now we're going to set each of these two partial derivatives equal to 0. If we factor out an 8, we're going to get x cubed minus y on the left and y cubed minus x on the right. Now the points of interest are 0, 0. If we plug in 0 into that expression, that is into x cubed minus y, we'll get 0. And the same is true if we plug it into y cubed minus x. The next point of interest is 1, 1. When x is 1 and y is 1, both f sub x and f sub y will be 0. And the other point of interest is negative 1, negative 1. When x is negative 1 and when y is negative 1, f of x, I mean f sub x and f sub y will both be 0. So those are the point of interest for this problem. Now, let's calculate the second partial derivative. So if we differentiate this expression with respect to x, 8y becomes 0. And the derivative of 8x cubed will be 8 times 3x squared, which is 24x squared. Now, let's find the second partial derivative with respect to y. So 8x goes to 0. The derivative of 8y cubed will be 24y squared. Now we need to determine the mixed derivative f sub xy. So if we differentiate that expression with respect to y, 8x cubed goes to 0. The derivative of negative 8y will be negative 8 times 1, or simply negative 8. 
So now we have everything that we need. So keep in mind, D is going to be the second partial derivative with respect to x times the second partial derivative with respect to y minus the second mixed derivative squared. So let's evaluate D at the first point, that is at 0, 0, or the origin. So at the origin, this second partial derivative with respect to x will be 0. 24 times 0 squared is 0. And the second partial derivative with respect to y will be 0. And this is a constant, so it's going to be minus negative 8 squared following this equation. So notice that d is a negative value. When d is less than 0, automatically we have a saddle point. So the point 0, 0 is a saddle point. So that's one of our answers. Now let's evaluate d at the next point, at 1, 1. When x is 1, f double x is going to be 24 times 1 squared, or 24. And when y is 1, fyy will be 24 as well. And then this is going to stay negative 8. So we're going to have minus negative 8 squared. Twenty-four times twenty-four is five hundred seventy-six. Negative eight squared is sixty-four. So five seventy-six minus sixty-four. That is five twelve. So we can see that D is a positive number. And F double X is also positive. It's positive twenty-four. So when these conditions are met, when D is positive and F double X is positive then that means that the function at AB is a local minimum. So now what we're going to do is evaluate the function at the point 1, 1. So using this expression, it's going to be 2 times 1 to the 4th, which is just 2, and then plus 2, and then minus 8 times 1 times 1, which is just 8, and plus 12. So we have 4 minus 8, which is negative 4, plus 12. That's positive 8. So we have a local min at the point 1, 1, and it has a value of 8. Now the last thing that we need to do is calculate D at the point negative 1, 1. So when x is negative 1, f double x will be positive 24. And when y is negative 1, f double y will be 24 as well. The mixed derivative is still negative 8, so this is going to be the same answer, positive 512. So d is still positive. The second partial derivative with respect to x is still positive, since it's positive 24. And so what we have here is another local minimum. Now, if we evaluate the function at negative 1 comma negative 1, it's going to be 2 times negative 1 to the 4th power plus 2 times negative 1 to the 4th power minus 8 times negative 1 times another negative 1 plus 12. So this is going to be the same. It's 2 plus 2 minus 8 plus 12, which is positive 8. And so that's basically it for this problem. So we have a saddle point at the origin, and we have two local minimums at the point 1, 1 and negative 1, 1, each of which have a value of positive 8. So now you know how to identify any critical points, saddle points, and local extreme values. So the saddle point is the origin. The critical points are 1, 1 and negative 1, negative 1.